Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing reports that the Xbox One was crashing during a Comic Con that has just passed. Um, the reports basically state that Microsoft were having issues through the entire weekend. Um, so we're going to be really analysing this. Originally, I wasn't actually going to cover this piece of news, but I've noticed it's become more prevalent actually on the internet, and it's not really a surprise, I suppose, but. I'm not exactly sure how to take this news if I'm honest because the reports are somewhat sketchy and they're really they are really the the epitome of hearsay. Nevertheless, we might as well analyze them. So, it basically originates from one website which is SKNR. And that website said that um a couple of reps had told the person in question um, that they were having issues and these were Microsoft representatives and so they actually said that the system crashed numerous times and um, then he actually later spoke to a technology reviewer by the name of Paleb Chatterjee I'm hoping I've pronounced that correctly and he is of Media and Entertainment Technologies and he also stated that there had been and I quote he had been the one who had confirmed to me that during the numerous attempts, meetings at E3, the systems crashed repeatedly, thus explaining why the one-on-one -on -one meetings were ended. He confided to me that they had six or seven attempts at meetings each time the hardware was unable to be stable enough to complete the demonstrations and that the issues remained at Comic-Con as this had been an ongoing problem over the weekends. The systems were restored, but the fact that the stability issues had arisen was a major concern for most gamers in attendance that we spoke with, end quote. And apparently, visiting the Sony booth as well, various people, both in the lines and at the booths, and Sony's own staff, might I add, rather gleefully, had also said the same thing. Yeah, their stuff keeps crashing or falling over or keeps going down. And, and I quote, the buzz was that the system was not complete and had been rushed to its current state in order to attempt to compete with the PlayStation 4, which was receiving overwhelming praise during the convention from everyone that I spoke to. He also says, however, at the end of the article, my take on it is that the system was down for the signings, there were various signings going on out of quote, um, because obviously it's Comic-Con, and that's a brief technical work and for some brief technical work, but for some reason, a campaign to spread stories about crashing and downtime was leaked to journalists, as both myself and Caleb were told the same story, but people lingering near the Microsoft booth. I spoke with some other staffers, and they said the systems came back on just after the panel was starting. My wife was attending, and we'll have to write up soon. Uh, that's what she said, and we'll have a write-up soon. I was... Off interviewing a director could, could, so could not attend. However, it does seem odd that it is not people who would spread rumours about the system crashing and issues for the media. End quote. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, first of all, if you're not a regular viewer, I'll just quickly go into it. I actually am very unbiased. Anyone who knows, well, who regularly watches the channel knows that I'm pretty damn brutally honest. Uh, so this is going to be a Microsoft, this isn't going to be a Microsoft favoritism and that's not going to be Sony favoritism either, it's just my brutal, honest opinion. Right, first of all, Microsoft have just come out of announcing news that they've increased the clock speed of the system um, from 800 megahertz to 853 megahertz. Now the reason they've said they've done this is because they said that they actually feel very confident that the system isn't actually running as hot as what they thought it was. Now, RROD, Red Ring of Death, the whole purpose of that, the, the primary cause for that is overheating. Now, there can be other crashes that are associated with, of course, dying Xboxes. and Some people just call them a Red Ring of Death, but the traditional one that most people think of, the three quadrants, it actually is heat related. I'm not going to go too much into it because I've explained it a couple of times previously, but for those who are uninitiated, it's basically a simple case of the Xbox gets so bloody hot that the cooling inside wasn't able to cope with it and therefore you got cases of, for example, bowing of the board. Now this is 
particularly true because of the clamp system. Um, this is basically how the heatsink, which is attached to both the GPU and the CPU, was attached. And it basically caused um, tension on the board. And it kind of started to bow a little bit. And so I actually had an issue with one of my own Xbox 360 it was actually a launch machine and I actually opened the bloody thing up I and you could actually see the board was very slightly bowed I mean we're not talking you know completely and utterly concave or concatenated here we're talking like a very slight bow but you could definitely see it and what basically happens is it breaks the solder now there are ways around that such as say the towel trick which basically you wrap the Xbox in a towel and let it cook for like 15 20 minutes because obviously air can't escape so it gets ridiculously red hot then you unplug it leave it to cool down and that's what the traditional red ring of death is it's overheating however from what microsoft have said this is not the case in fact they have designed the system now designed and is capable of two different things so we're going to go into that in a moment but they have designed the system to run for up to 10 years on. In other words, it is not designed to be keep being turned off and on. Now, that's not to say that you can't do that if you're, you know, into energy saving or you just want to reduce wear and tear or, you know, whatever reason. You can, of course, switch it off. It's not going to explode if you do. But the hardware, according to Microsoft, is designed. The AMD Jaguar um, is designed to go into a low power state where it's idle, where it's not playing games basically and relax and that's it. It doesn't really require um, heavy revving up and indeed there have been reports even on the internet that have circulated that the Xbox One was really really noisy and the reason behind that of course was because people assumed heat but we also know that that's not true because Microsoft have confirmed that yes the system was doing that but it was purposeful. It was development kits, early development kits, and, you know, gee whiz, shockingly, they weren't complete at the time. And you had an issue where, look, they hadn't actually built in the thermal controls. Now, all that basically means is that in the operating system itself, it monitors how hot the system gets. Now, this is for two reasons. One, energy saving because obviously the faster the fan is the more energy it's using as well as by the way extra wear and tear but the primary reason as well is noise so what happens basically is that as the cpu rises or cpu gpu in this case apu technically which is an amalgamation of both but as the die rises in temperature the operating system will basically keep being fed the data so it will be like okay let's just use arbitrary figures let's say it's 40 degrees and it goes to like 43, 44, 45, okay, it's gone to 45 degrees, I'm going to ramp up the fan speed 10%, and I'm just using these figures, pulling them out my ass, it could be whatever figures, I don't know what they've set the fan curve to, but let's just assume that that's the case, just for a moment, so okay, it's gone to the speed, it ramps up the fan, however, at that point, they'd not written any of the stuff, none, it was just, you know, bare metal, it was... The operating system hadn't even been finished coding, so you can't really blame them for that. And as the as a developer, as a programmer, web developer, uh, even if you're one of those people who does, you know, graphic art and stuff, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. You just use placeholders all the bloody time. It's just a standard thing. It's like even even if you're moving furniture around, it's not like you're going to put the bed you know in the position you need it to begin with no you'll just be like okay well this is where the bed goes and you might make like a little mark or something just to indicate the size of it if you're moving around you know your bedroom or your living room or whatever in other words you just use a placeholder in this case all they did was just to get the bloody thing working was just to simply put the fan at 100 percent simple uh, it was one of those not very elegant but it just works solutions and so they've increased the clock speed because they are saying that, look, the system runs perfectly cool. So what are my thoughts? Well, judging from what Microsoft have said, I would be really shocked if it was heat-related. I'm not saying it's not heat-related, 
because I have not stood next to the demo booths with a thermometer, with a thermometer. I'm sorry, stuck into the system and you know touching the heatsink fan and kept a regular you know check of the temperature. However, I would be pretty shocked if it was uh, heat related after what Microsoft have said because if the, it is heat related and the system does crash because of this. They're going to have massive amounts of egg on their face. I mean, it's it's not going to be pretty because the media and the people who have bought the console are going to tear them a new one to the point where it's going to be a catastrophe for all involved. So I don't think it's heat related. It is possible that, as the blogger have said, the issues were actually blown out of proportion. It could be that they were just doing routine maintenance. It could be that they were changing the games over it could be that maybe you know it's still not even got finished software on it we know that so maybe they were just checking to see how everything was actually going maybe they were using it as an experiment we don't know a lot of the stuff that's the problem because you can only guess a certain amount based upon you know the directions for example let's say and there's a really stupid example but it's a non-technical one let's say you're driving and let's say I were to give you the directions to say, oh, I don't know, a store, but I was to miss out the last direction because I was just plum forgot, right? And so you get there, but then, okay, well, what way do I turn? You know, I there's three possible directions you could go. Obviously, let's assume that you're in a city block, so you know the standard uh, block that everyone's familiar with. Well, you can't go backwards because you know that the store is definitely not that direction. So now you can go either left straight or right and i forgot to put the direction in because you know i'm a noob in this particular instance so what way do you go to find this store in other words i haven't given you the complete information so you're just going to have to make a guess and this is unfortunately what a lot of the time this is coming down to now there are other possibilities as well one of them is that it's software crashing if it's software crashing honestly it doesn't really worry me that much um, the primary reason it doesn't worry me much is because, look, Microsoft have said just recently that they're actually still working on DirectX 11, uh, well, DirectX for the Xbox One, should I say. In other words, they're chipping away at it, improving the code, blah, 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 and shockingly, things crash when you're still working on them. That's a given. Now, it doesn't look good PR-wise, but you know what? People are really keen to forget that Assassin's Creed, uh, Assassin's Creed crashed on the PlayStation 4 when it was being demoed. Uh, and people didn't really make a big deal of that. I'm kind of surprised. I really thought that Sony were going to be torn a new one for that one. But no. And I think the reason that people didn't tear them a new one, quite rightly so by the way, is because it was unfinished code running on an unfinished, ex uh, unfinished system running on an unfinished operating system. So, not only are you using unfinished code, which, by the way, has been, you know, being tested on a new system. So, not only is it, you know, changes to a new engine, it's a new engine on an architecture you're not familiar with. You've also got new hardware that hadn't been finalized at the time. And in addition to all of that, an operating system and all the APIs that, well, shockingly, once again, hadn't been finished at the time. So... You basically got you're basically juggling like four or five chainsaws in the air while you're pretty much trying to ride a unicycle. It's not really a surprise that at some point or another something for, for, uh, fell over because obviously a lot of this stuff was being handled real time on the PlayStation. So you know I actually give it props for not crashing more, and I also give Sony a lot of props for not cheaping out and going the pre-rendered route. I thought that was really good, actually. I was really happy that they didn't do that. Um, so I'm not particularly hugely worried about the Xbox One. I am, however, of course, going to be watching like a hawk for the first, like, six months for news on the system crashing. Now, that isn't to say that I'm not expecting reports of the system dying. Um, it's actually kind of funny because I was doing some research on this and I don't know how substantiated this is because uh, I didn't do huge amounts of research on this particular aspect. But 
many people have said that the PS2 had a ridiculous failure rate as well. It's just that the internet itself wasn't so prevalent and it wasn't quite as much as the Xbox 360, which, you know, everyone knows about the issues with that, but apparently the PS2 had massive issues with laser. And mine didn't. My launch machine actually lasted for a long time, actually. Just after the Xbox 360 uh, was launched, my PS2 died, and I had to buy a slim one because I was trying to complete Kingdom Hearts 2. But that's a completely different topic. But, yeah, so all systems have issues. It's just how many, how, what's the percentage? You know, if you if you put out, like, you know, if your failure rate is, like, 2%, on a brand new console, eh, it's not bad. If it's like 1%, that's that's pretty good. But if it's something like, you know, 25% of the consoles fall over within the first three months, then it's pretty damn awful, as I'm sure you'll agree. So we'll have to just see. I'm not really that worried about these reports. I don't really think there's that much to worry about. We'll have to see, however. That isn't to say that, you know, I'm not taking the reports seriously, but it just, they're really sketchy at the moment. And... I think people are looking for some... I think people are kind of witch hunting as well on the Xbox, which is not really cool. I'm not one of those people who are just like, oh, okay, it's the Xbox, let's find some bad news about it. Because that's not really A, professional for a gaming channel, and B, it's kind of crap because, you know, it's not like... Sony or Microsoft or whatever need your defense and so it's better just to approach things with an open mind and if something sucks if it crashes if it falls over yeah go on to them and say why haven't you fixed this because I have just paid money or I want to buy this or why should I buy this if it dies because you know I'm a paying customer at the end of the day that's fine but don't just look for excuses when the system hasn't even broken yet and it's just you know hearsay from a couple of uh, blogs on the internet or whatever where whatever's going on with that particular system anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I will see you soon take care bye for now